Now, as a challenge, I want you to write your own functions, but not inside the Chrome developer tools. I want to introduce you to something called Carol the robot. And Carol is a very simple robot that takes very simple instructions. So let's first change the world to a five by five to make it a little bit smaller and easier to work with. Now, the next thing that you'll notice is that you have this thing called function main. And in this case, everything that you put into here will get executed when you click the run button. And Carol the robot, as you can see here, is able to take a certain number of commands, including move, which moves it forward in the direction it's facing, turn left, put down a beeper or pick up a beeper. So those are the basic commands that we're gonna work with. And let me just demo some of these to you. So if we call the function move on Carol, you can see it moves by a single space. And we can obviously repeat this a few times. So now if we reset, and we hit run, Carol will move by three spaces because we wrote the move command three times. So everything you place into this function main will get called when you hit run, but you can create more than one function. So for example, I know that I can make Carol turn left by simply writing turn left, run, and she turns left. Now, if I wanted her to go around in a circle, then I can simply create a function called go in circle. And inside this function, I can say maybe move one step, turn left, then move, then turn left, then move. And now I can go into this function main and I can say go in circle calling that function that I just created down here, which of course will execute all of the code that's inside the curly braces. So now if I reset and I hit run, you can see that Carol goes in a half circle. So if I want her all the way back to the beginning, then I can simply call this function again, making sure that I've spelt it exactly the same way as I did when I created that function. So now if I reset and hit run, you can see that it turns a full circle and I can write as many of these as I like in order for Carol to run my code repeatedly. So as a challenge, I want you to write a little bit of code that moves Carol all the way to the right corner on a five by five world. So inside the resources of this lesson, you'll find a link to the Stanford Carol. So I want you to set the world to five by five, delete what's currently inside function main, and to write some code that gets Carol from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. Remembering that you can always take a look at the reference to see what commands Carol is able to use. So pause the video now and give that a go. All right, so that shouldn't have been too difficult. And there's many, many ways of solving this challenge. So it doesn't matter which way you used as long as Carol ended up over here when you hit run. So one way of doing this would be getting Carol to go one, two, three, four, four steps forwards. So that would be move four times. and then to turn left and then move four times again. So now if we hit run, you can see Carol ends up in the top right corner. Now, some of you might've realized that move is repeated here. So you might've created a function that's called maybe move four times And inside this function, you've placed four of these move commands. So now instead of all this repeated code, you can say move four times here and also move four times here. So this does exactly the same 
as we can see if we reset it, but it's now a little bit shorter and a little bit less repetitive. So using this principle of keeping your code dry, we can use functions to do that. It allows us to remove repetition into these modules of code, which makes our code shorter and allows us to identify problems if it does occur. So for example, if we accidentally written the code wrong, and Carol only moved three steps each time, then we would know that we can identify the function that's meant to move four times and figure out what the problem was. So the next thing I want you to use is the command put beeper. So Carol is able to put down this thing called a beeper, which is kind of just like a square. And I want you to write some code that commands her to put down the beeper in a specific pattern. So the first slightly easier challenge is can you get her to put a diagonal line of beepers all the way from the bottom left corner to the top right corner. So that should be five beepers in total and I want you to try and write your code in the least repetitive way possible using functions. So pause the video now and see if you can complete this challenge. Okay, so let's break down the problem. Essentially, Carol will start in the bottom left corner and she can move forwards, turn left, move, put down beeper. So one way of doing this would be writing move forwards, turn left, move forwards, put beeper, turn right, move forwards, turn left, move forwards and put beeper. So if we run our code as is, you can see that she's begun on her journey, but you might also notice that there's a lot of repeated code in here, especially something like, for example, move, turn left, move, put beeper, move, turn left, move, put beeper. So there's a lot of things that are repeated. So what if we could put all of that into a function? So we can create a function, diagonal move and beeper. Now, of course you can name your functions, whatever it is that makes sense to you. But in this case, I've just called it diagonal move and beeper because I'm gonna get it to move diagonally and then put down a beeper. And that involves moving, turning left, moving, putting down beeper and turning right. So if I take this chunk of code and put it into my function, then instead of calling all of these steps, I can simply say diagonal move and beeper, diagonal move and beeper. And if we do this four times, then you can see that Carol will go all the way to the end. And the only one that's missing is the one in the beginning the put beeper before we do any of these other diagonal moves. So if we hit run now, we've managed to solve our solution by getting Carol to repeat the diagonal move and put down beeper function. Now you might've solved this challenge in a variety of different ways, and that's fine. As long as you got Carol to perform this functionality, then you have succeeded in completing the challenge. Now for the final optional challenge, if you want, I'd like you to challenge yourself to see if you can get Carol to create a chessboard pattern like what we have here. So alternating tiles of beepers, essentially. So this is completely optional. It's just a bit of fun and to test your understanding of functions. I will post the code of the solution in the resources section of this lesson so you can check it once you're done trying out the challenge. In the next lesson, I wanna talk about a more advanced form of functions. And those are functions that allow you to specify an input. So for all of that and more, I'll see you on the next lesson.